So instead of doing nothing, we want to take the picture's name and display it. Do you remember how to get the value inside the entry box? We've done this many times in the past. It's ent.get. This basically gets what's inside the entry box, ent. We'll call this variable uh, input, imp. So whatever we type in is now equated to imp. Before, we were creating the image directly inside the function. But now, we only want to create the image when we press the button. So let me move the image creation part inside the function. See, in the past, it was creating Rebecca.gif. Instead of creating Rebecca, we want to create whatever we type in inside the entry box. So it would be imp, imp, in this location. Let's run the program and display a picture. So, currently we have nothing, but if I put in the name of a picture I want, chances are the picture will show up, right? Let's try it. Let me put in the name of a pretty sunset. We'll call it Opera. Yeah, Opera is the one with the pretty sunset. Huh. Wah, wah, wah. Uh, the picture is not showing up. It's not working. Why is it not working? What? I'm confused. Yeah, I'm confused too. Huh, let's see. Oh, I know. The reason why we have this problem is because of the global variable issue. Remember that from last lecture? I told you to study that. So what happened is we create a temp and pick inside a function. When you create them inside a function, when you jump out of function, they are forgotten. So we might create them, but as soon as we create them, we throw them away. So what happens is we will have to make them global variables. So everybody knows who they are and they are remembered everywhere. To do so, it's very simple. We just type global pick and global temp. After you've done this, they will be remembered everywhere. So let's see if we run the program now what happens. Okay, let's put the picture of the pretty sunset called Opera back in. Opera.gif. Now, hopefully, you see exactly what I see, which is a nice sunset. So this is the program we've been waiting for. Now, before we leave, I want to add another twist to this program. What if when I type clear, I want them to erase and empty the canvas screen? How would I go about doing that? This means that we have to make some decisions and use if statements. So let me write, if the input is equal to clear, then we would tell the canvas to delete the item. Well. In this case, temp. Temp is the item that we created. Or else, we'll follow along with the rest of the code, meaning you'll just go create another image. In this case, I am checking if the user has typed the word clear. If they did, we would delete the image. If they didn't, then we would display the new image that we just entered. So, let me run this program and try to run it. Okay, so let me create, I don't know, Rebecca.gif. Okay, now that we have this picture, if I type clear, right? Let me type clear, and when I press the button, you see how it's erased? Uh-huh. So you can delete whatever picture you have in there this way. Okay, so today we created our very first um, useful program. We can now display our cool pictures by typing the names inside the picture. I mean inside the entry box. So remember the picture must be in the GIF format and the picture must be in the same folder. We also learn how to erase the picture from the canvas. For your homework, I want you to program this yourself. While you're doing this, try to customize it to your liking. Put your own GIF pictures in there. Learn how to convert pictures into the GIF format. 
make automatic focus onto your entry box and erase the picture when you're done with it. And most importantly, have fun. Well, this is your first step into the application programming. It's a very rewarding, we were rewarding experience. One day you just might feel like you could make anything you want, which is a pretty cool feeling. So, this is all the time we have for today. This is Che. Bye bye.